Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to have a card making mixed media experience. <laughs> I've got so much going on on these cards, it's kind of crazy, but they were so much fun to make and I made them over the course of a couple days, so um, I didn't tire from any of the um, kind of monotonous steps that you know, you use when you're making a batch of cards. So the first thing I'm using here is a jelly plate. I've got this tiny little seashell, not seashell, fish scale jelly plate, as well as a larger eight by 10 jelly plate. And these are both by Jane Davenport. Um, they're a new set. They're thinner than the previous jelly arts jelly plates. And they're meant so that you can actually use them in your art journal if you don't wanna work on loose sheets. So I'm starting off by taking some different shades of blue markers and I am drawing some waves on the on the uh, plate itself with alcohol pens. Any alcohol marker is going to be fine for that. So if you have Sharpies, um, if you have Copics, it doesn't really matter. Any alcohol marker is going to be just fine. It doesn't have to be a brush tip or anything fancy. Then I'm going to brayer over a light kind of periwinkle blue color and I'm putting down a fish scale stencil. Now this is um, actually a sticker sheet that came with the jelly plates. They have these like little, it's a, it's a sheet of like fish scale stickers. And I'm also using some deli paper and I'm just kind of pulling some extra paint off of my plate here. I'm going for a really rich layered um, effect here. So now that I've put some pattern down, I'm using some chalk pastels applied with a sponge and I am putting it over this kind of fish, um, this uh, wavy stencil and this polka dot stencil. I'm thinking about like waves and bubbles. So the uh, the wavy line is actually like a journaling line stencil, but I think it looks like waves. That's from Lost Coast Designs. And the, um, the polka dot stencil is by Hero Arts, I believe. And the fish scale stencils I used previously were from Judykins. They were the kite stencils. So I'll try to find them all and link them up down below, but th some might be discontinued because I don't, you know, get rid of my products as soon as they're, you know, discontinued. So I'm sure you can find something similar if you can't find those exact same stencils. So we'll do our, we'll do our best. We'll do our best to find you something <laughs> or, you know, dig in your stash. There's so many substitutions you can make that will make your work look more interesting. Make, make it look more like you. I put some iridescent medium right on top of that other jelly plate I'm using as a kind of a palette for my brayer. And I'm pulling off a, a kind of like a first generation print. I'm going to be getting a lot of mileage out of this plate here, um, but I just wanted to kind of get some of that media off and then leave some kind of grungy stuff in the background that I can do for another print. So I want to get some more colors here in the mix. I'm using some alizarin crimson, and this is uh, just a, an acrylic paint by M. Graham, and I'm also using some dioxazine violet from Liquitex. I find that I can mix and match my acrylic paints with little problem. So use what you have. If you've got craft paints from the craft store that were like 50 cents, it's going to work fine. If you've got, you know, paints from the art store that were $8, it's going to work fine. They're going to work fine together. You know, use what you have because acrylic paints have a shelf life. A lot of people don't realize that, especially the less expensive ones or the more fluid paints, they're gonna, um, they can go bad quicker. They can dry out in the tube and that is the real waste, not using them on projects, okay? So it's never a waste if you're actually using them on a project. I know, you know, we wanna save some paints for best, but if they're gonna dry out or they're gonna get chunky, you might as well use them and have fun, right? So I'm putting another layer on this sticker sheet here because um, I really wanna build that up and make some cool embellishments with that. And um, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Now here I've taken the whole plate up. You can see the through the back of the plate what it looks like. And this hadn't been drying that long, but actually it dried long enough for me to be able to pull the paper off. And the other thing I like about that thinner gel plate is that I can peel, I can pull away the gel plate and leave the paper flat so it doesn't want to buckle as much. So um, that's kind of a nice advantage. Now on this little tiny seashell, I keep wanting to say seashell, it's more of a fish scale. Um, this jelly plate you can use as a stamp, which is nice. You can put it right on a stamp mount and you can, you know, press it down. You could use your ink pads with it. You could use, um, you could ink it up with an ink pad and then like doodle on it with like um, a silicone tip tool or press it to a stamp and get like kind of a kiss design. I love that. And here I'm using my, uh, my jelly plate that I've been using as a palette. I'm using that as kind of like a big stamp to kind of squish some paint through a stencil. I say experiment as much as you dare to. And there's no reason you shouldn't dare to because you're not going to hurt these products. Now I am a, um, I am a, plate cleaner, a jelly plate cleaner when I'm done. I know not everybody is, a lot of people like to leave, like to kind of put them away dirty so that you start have 
kind of like a base of grunginess to start, but I do clean my plates when I'm done using them. I just think it's going to be, um, it's going to preserve them a little bit more because it's some, in some instances I want a really good print. Um, so I do. Some people just keep one side of the plate really clean and they, you know, don't clean the other side of the plate and that's fine too. Do whatever you want to do, but I'm in, I'm in the, the clean my jelly plate camp. Now I rubbed a little ink on this sticker sheet because I wanted to make sure I filled everything up and here you can see what the stickers will look like and um, I'm just going to keep them on the sheet for now but I just wanted to give you that, uh, give you a look at that. And uh, there's kind of the print I pulled from my palette. This is the one I did where I layered up the fish scales. This one here was uh, one of the first ones I pulled off that plate and this is the deli paper that I was kind of cleaning stuff off with. So, you know, you can get quite a few interesting little prints. That I actually tried a different plate I had. It was a Creative Palette by Stampendous. I was trying those same techniques and they worked fine. Um, I did get my paper stuck to it though and it ripped a little bit. So you do have to be careful. Don't let your paints dry on that plate, but it's fine on all the jelly brand uh, plates, jelly arts brand plates to let your paper dry on there. So now I'm going to do some stamping here and I wanted to carry on the fish scale mermaid theme and I'm stamping these mermaid stamps that unfortunately are discontinued from Sweet Pea Stamps. Actually that company went out of business in 2015 but I just adored these stamps. I'm so glad I bought them when I did because they've I've enjoyed coloring these over the years. They're just so fun. I'm using a variety of different markers here to color in my images and uh, you'll notice those brush tip markers there. They are not available yet but they will be soon and I will be doing a review on them after I've used them for a bit but those are the new Ohuhu brush tip markers um, and I just wanted to I know they're not going to be available for another couple of weeks but that'll give me a plenty of chance to really put them through their paces and see what I think of them before I do my final review but so far so good I've, I really enjoyed the way they colored and the nice blending I was able to get with them so uh, the, when you have stamps like this that you're going to color they do require some time I don't know how long it took me to color each of these images, but um, I only colored one on camera and I think it was probably close to half an hour per image to color them. So just kind of keep your expectations realistic. Alcohol markers are not the quickest things to color with. Water-based markers are much quicker. Use a, uh, like a Bristol or a smooth watercolor paper. They are quite a bit quicker. Um, or watercolor paints or watercolor pencils. I find that colored pencils or alcohol markers are probably the most time-consuming coloring medium but it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. I find it relaxing. So that's why I wanted to color with this medium. And I also want to try out these new markers because trying out new markers is always a lot of fun. Something you might like if you do a lot of um, alcohol marker coloring would be an opaque white pen. So this is the Posca pen, the ultra fine pen. I like this because I can refill it with like a really fluid acrylic ink or you could use um, a white gel pen. If you have a white gel pen, just watch out for clogging and try to use it frequently so you don't end up letting the tip clog. I rarely ever use up a white gel pen. It's usually I forget about it and it goes, um, it goes clogged. And here I'm using a quickie glue pen, which is like a gel pen, but it's got adhesive in it. And I am coloring, I'm just drawing anywhere I want to have a little shimmer. And then I'm going to put some clear iridescent ultra fine glitter on top. Now the quickie glue pen is really neat because you don't have to sprinkle the glitter while it's still wet. It'll be tacky after it dries. So you can use it with uh, foil or glitter uh, after it's dry, flocking, whatever you like. And it just gives you a really subtle sheen, which I think is so pretty. I've really kind of got back in my card making groove lately and it's um, in no small part to the fact that I love playing with my jelly plate. This one here is a three inch by five inch, either three by five or three and a half by five. I think it's three by five. It's perfect like kind of tag sized jelly plate and um, you don't need to have so many different ones but I do find that I enjoy having the different sizes for um, different projects. Now this is a top fold four and a quarter by five and a half card so I cut a, a piece of cardstock the hot dog way so like the long skinny way and fold it in half so I'd have some tall skinny cards and I am using this jelly plate with my distress oxide inks because they're more like paint than ink quite frankly that's why I like them um, and I am doing kind of like a block on each of the backgrounds so when you have a jelly plate that is um, a smaller size you can stamp it on a card and have that cool edge that's what I like about it. But you can also just get gelatin at the um, supermarket and you can make your own jelly plates that won't be reusable indefinitely. I do have a res recipe for one that you can reuse and it won't mold on you, but um, you know, you could definitely do that. See if you really like it before spending the money on the um, on the permanent jelly plate. I do find the, the store-bought ones to be a little more durable. However, 
handmade ones can be remelted and report if they get nicked or scratched or something. So um, any way you want to do it, just have fun. You can use a styrofoam meat tray or vegetable tray, no, a takeout box. You can cut your styrofoam into different pieces, different size pieces, and you can use that for printmaking really well. So seriously, use what you have. If you have a mirror stamp, remember mirror stamps from back in the day? Same thing, use that. Have fun, explore, experiment, and really enjoy. I was really got a kick out of this because I got to use some stamps I haven't used yet. And this set here was a Fisker set that I got at a big box craft store many years ago. It was from the Teresa Collins line. I'm not sure if she still has stamps, but anyway, it had kind of like the scallop fish scale um, looking border, which I thought would be really pretty right on my card bases. And I'm stamping that right along the um, jelly print edge that I made just to kind of give it a little extra border. And there was also one called, I think it was called like Rainbows. And it was, it's by Paper Tray Ink. And I just bought that a couple weeks ago, uh, ordered it online because they're having a huge like clearance sale. So I'm not sure if that stamp is still going to be available. You'll see it in a minute. Um, but that's where I got that one. So I think this one came from like Joann's or AC Moore. I'm not sure exactly, but I'll try to find it and link it up for you if it's still around. Sometimes you can find them on Amazon even if they're discontinued. Um, so this is the one I was telling you about called Rainbows. The neat thing about this, I'm, I'm considering whether I want to trim off the excess because it's got like a big rectangle of the photopolymer stuff. So I might trim that down. But anyway, the neat thing about this is you could repeat it to make like a full background. You can repeat it to make a long border. You've got two parts. You've got it inside and outside of the scallop rainbow. And uh, I just put it on both sides of my block here. So it saved me a little time. Um, but I love that it's very easily to repeat and tessellate so that you can make a large um, image. I'm sorry about the reflection there. You're seeing my super fancy studio lights, which are like um, hardware store aluminum clip-on lights that are attached to the joists of my basement because that, that's my fancy studio. I'm in the basement still. Um, <laughs> and uh, so that's what you're seeing reflected there. So I just grabbed a couple colors that I had used in other backgrounds and stamped those on there. I wasn't worried about being perfect because with this, um, with this style of card making, with the jelly printing, the beauty is in the imperfection and the mess. And I just love it. I just, um, I just want to let loose sometimes in my card making. And you can really incorporate the artsier side when you do stuff like this. And since I use Distress Oxides, I could give it a little spritz of water and then it would make the ink react differently and I could blot it and get this kind of bleached out look, which I thought looked very perfect for like um, a beachy kind of cards because you think of like beachy things getting kind of like splashed and uh, you know I like that. So now I went through and looked at the uh, different images that I colored and I just kind of matched a background to the one that I colored as best I could and um, then I just kind of set about picking different elements to make my cards with. I find that I use less and less pattern paper, store-bought pattern paper these days because I love making my own backgrounds and stamping them and printing them. So um, if you're like that, you know, you might want to give some of these printmaking techniques a try. Now, because I spent so much time coloring these images, I really wanted them to um, be prominent on the cards. So what I did was I just cut some black cardstock and mounted them all and then just trimmed them. So I had about a sixteenth of an inch border. And then I looked at my jelly prints and decided I wanted to make just some kind of like strips or borders with them. So this first one I cut out by hand, just going along one of the um, scallops in the paper. And I just glued that along the bottom because I really liked what I had printed on the background of the card base. So I didn't want to cover all that up. That's kind of the hard thing about jelly printing is that like you might love the entire paper and then you don't want to cover any of it up because there's a little bits and you know spots that look so cool so that's kind of the one like drawback to that so um I kind of just stuck that down trimmed off any excess and I used a little fish scale to embellish that so um I think that was kind of really cool that they included those stickers with that jelly plate and you can buy the stickers separately so if you already have the jelly plate and you can buy just a little fish scale jelly plate separately so I like that too you don't have to buy the big one if you don't want to I thought that this um uh, this yarn that I had, this novelty yarn, was really nice. I had some eyelash yarn and some little um, kind of like flagged yarn. 
and I just, it reminds me kind of like of seaweed, and I thought that would be a really nice embellishment for this card. Actually, there was a piece of, like, fuchsia eyelash yarn in the jelly plate kit that you can use on your prints, like, so that you can get kind of a seaweed look. So it's a great way to incorporate things from other crafts that you do into your card making. So that's what I loved about scrapbooking, was that I could use anything that I had for any other craft, it seemed like, and you can do that for card making just as well. These little pearls are from the Dollar Tree, and I thought pearls would be great because underwater, mermaids, you know, you th oysters, pearls, that sort of thing. So I just put a little um, accent of those on there. And for this card here, I'm just going to put a couple of the little stickers side by side to make a little scallop. And that'll be pretty much all I need for the embellishment there. I just want to make sure that the image that I spent so long coloring is the focal point of the card. And um, I think it's so neat just to see how I'm using the same supplies on everything, but how each card's a little bit different. Um, and it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun at this stage because you're seeing all of your hard work pay off because you've been like maybe working over a couple of days on all these different elements and then all of a sudden you've got seven cards, which I think is is so fun. You could use ribbon if you preferred ribbon. Um, you could take a strip of washi tape if you want that for a border. Use what you have and make it your own. So that's basically the thing I want to stress with this because we all have different supplies. We all have different stores. We've all been crafting for a different amount of time. So if you've been crafting for 20 years, you have supplies you can't even buy anymore probably. And if you've just started crafting, then you probably have you know different things so you know use what you have if you need a uh, like a a border try tape try a strip of cardstock try some yarn you know use whatever you have that's gonna that's gonna look nice um doesn't have to be the same thing i'm using so for some of these cardstock strips i actually took some border dies and i just die cut i cut like uh, strips of cardstock and die cut them of the jelly printed cardstock um i tried to use scallops and things look like waves just to reinforce the theme of mermaids but uh, you could also use decorative edge scissors if you have those they would work just as well so seriously use what you have sometimes the dies are easy just because you can um kind of crank them through and then have a bunch ready all at once but whatever you choose make it your own and have fun because that's the whole point of card making and then sending it off to someone you care about uh, which I think is probably the best part of the whole process I want to thank you so much for watching today please give me a thumbs up if you liked it and until next time happy crafting